tutorial is for the train body of the miniature train. I'm going to start sketching the back face of this uh, train and kind of extrude it forward. It's kind of funky though, the drawing doesn't give me all that much uh, to work on. So you really have to look at it. And when you do, you find out that the back of this train has a radius value of 2.35. And once you set that up, and dimension that center mark 0.375 according to the drawing and it is centered right there in one inch so that means the overall is two we're fully constrained that's all the information we need to go ahead and extrude this shape forward and as we do that you should see this train body kind of take shape and it comes forward 1.75 inches and there we go. I'm going to build this uh, hole on this right side of it first before we go further. And it's not a perfectly drilled hole. Actually, it's got two lines coming across. I'm going to draw them really large to exaggerate it first. And then we're going to go ahead and modify it. There's a circle we're going to place in between these two. Not worrying about where it is. But we are going to make it tangent, if possible, to one of them. Saves us a step. I'm going to make it tangent to the other one. So this one is tangent to that one. I use the tangent constraint tool. We're going to go ahead and dimension this circle's size. And according to the drawing, it's a radius value of 0.5. So we got to multiply that by 2 to get a diameter because we're drawing a circle. And then its location is in, checking that drawing, 0.25. Uh, not really going to be using this extra geometry and once you trim it you'll see this shape really take form and it is fully constrained finish that sketch extrude it as a cut make sure you choose it since there's multiple shapes on that sketch plane and all the way through okay next up sketch plane on the front of this we're going to draw that rectangular base with that circular top and I drew it and I missed this corner here. I thought I was on the origin but I didn't so I'm gonna make it coincident there just to fix it and place a circle right up here. Looking at the drawing the radius of this kind of top part of the engine there would be 0.75 so if it's a radius I gotta multiply by 2 to get a diameter and the height of this rectangle is 1.375. You do have to look. The rectangular base is actually only 0.875. You really got to check those drawings and those extension lines uh, to figure I hit it on just right. So we're fully constrained. Finish that sketch. Go ahead and extrude it forward and choose both shapes here. And this is a little tricky too. The only information you're given is. 5.5 from the back edge, but that's a little long and we forget we got to take away this back edge. That back edge is 1.75 so I just subtracted it and typed that in. Inventor does the math for me. I'll choose OK and we're looking pretty good. Next up are some holes. Let's do that hole right on top for the stack. So in order to do that, since this is a rounded feature here, we need to put a work plane on it. So I'll click on that work plane tool, choose that rounded top. So I want it attached to that top and then parallel to an origin plane. So I access my origin planes in the origin folder in the browser bar, and that's the origin plane, that XZ plane that I want to make it parallel to, and there it is. Put a sketch plane on it, and I'll go ahead and draw my hole. And uh, I'm gonna have to use a hole tool here because there is a note on the drawing that says all holes are drilled with point angles. But I'm gonna go ahead and draw the circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and dimension it for size 0.5 and locate its center mark from this top edge down. The drawing says 0.875 and it is centered on this. So I'm going to dimension that to be one inch in. Finish that sketch and I have to use the hole tool here. Now I didn't have to draw a circle. I could have just drawn a, a point but my center mark is that circle. And uh, like I said it was a little overkill putting the circle on there, but I use the center mark of that circle and its depth is going to be 0.25 with a diameter of 0.5. And there's that drill point that we need. It's at an angle. So I'll choose OK. 
drills that hole out. I'm done with the work plane, let's hide it. And let's build some, click three times for our points. And then I'm gonna dimension them. And the drawing, again, this is where it gets pretty tricky. Make sure you know what's, what's what here. The height of these points is 0.125 from that bottom edge. And this one's also 0.125. This next hole is up 0.625 from that bottom edge. 0.625. It is centered as well, so I'll make sure that's one inch, and it is. And these ones are dimensioned from this left edge. This point on that right side is dimensioned over 1.625. And this point on the left from the left edge is dimensioned over 0.375. My points are fully constrained. I'll hit Finish Sketch, use the Hole tool. And the neat thing of uh, using points is you can just say From Sketch and it automatically selects them. You just need to define their depth. And the depth says 0.125 with a diameter of 0.125. And that X3, in case you didn't know, it means there's three of these holes that are like. So we'll just go ahead and choose OK. And we're all set. I'm going to put a sketch plane on this right side. Plot another point for our axle hole. And let's go ahead and dimension this from the back edge. And that is one inch over. And the height is 0.5. There's another axle in the front here. So let's go ahead and plot that point while we're here. And from the back edge, it is located four and a half inches and its height from the bottom edge is going to be just like that other one 0.5 inches up. We'll finish this sketch go ahead and use that hole tool again and this time it is a tapped hole. It's got a thread on the inside and the size thread is quarter so we'll choose 0.25 with that de designation point or excuse me quarter inch dash 20 UNC that means it's threaded on the inside. All we have to specify is the depth, and the depth is 0.875. And that looks good. We'll say OK. Now there's a second set on this back side because the holes don't go all the way through. I'm going to show you a quick trick here uh, by using the mirror tool. First thing, though, you need a reference. Um, and that reference is going to be in the form of a plane that's going to be offset from this front edge. So I'm going to click and drag after I chose that work plane tool and it's gonna come back an inch, so minus one inch. So I've got a work plane right through the center of this train, and that's gonna be my mirror plane. So I'm gonna choose that mirror tool in the 3D mode here, and it's asking for what features I wanna mirror. I wanna mirror the holes, so it's all. Last part is the holes on the back, so let's go ahead and look on this back side here, and I'm gonna rotate it around there and also hide my work plane because I don't want it to get in the way. So I'll right click, choose visibility. Let's put a sketch right on the back here and plot a point. Um, there's our point. Height is from that bottom edge. Just make sure you're checking your drawing. 0.375 and its width is over an inch. Now some might say, hey, that's the same reference as the arc. Why couldn't I have just projected this arc and used the project geometry tool? Well, you'll see why in a minute because I'm going to do something kind of funky. Let's finish that sketch and uh, now that I've got that point plotted, I can use the whole tool. It'll auto select it with choosing from sketch and it's just a regular simple hole and it is drilled a depth of 0.5 and its diameter is 0.25. Okay, this is where I follow through on telling you why I had to create that point instead of just projecting the geometry. It says round all edges, point one, except for drilled holes. Well, I already drilled the holes. So when I choose the fillet tool and I say all fillets and all rounds and give it that value of point one, oops, point one, uh, it's going to choose my holes as well. So it auto selects everything I can there, every edge, every interior, every exterior, choose OK. And it filleted the holes. Well, I'll show you a little trick over here in the browser bar. See that fillet? 
we're going to drag it above the holes. So Inventor applies the fillet first and then applies the holes. And that is your finished train body.